There you go. And so we got potato mashers. I can't remember what they called it. I think it was just called the stick grenade. But look, see all the explosives around it? Yeah. That's a really. <laughs> that was kind of used in uh, World War One. So imagine you pull the pin on that and throw that in a trench. It's going to be really effective. All these different. These are the kind of grenades that you would like shoot off a rifle. You need to put in a, a crimp round in the chamber, and then you tilt it at an angle and pff, up. Remember that scene in Gate at the mm -hmm. very end when they're fighting the knights? Yeah. And this is the kind of the thing they would use. It's basically like a 40 mil. I can't remember what. So what size mil? What millimeter were these? You, these are like 37, are they? I'm not sure. To be perfectly honest. <laughs> Too much stuff to keep track of, right? Oh. I'm more of a knife guy. I would like to do big knife guy. I got, I got tons of knives. I just throw them, I don't make them. <laughs> <laughs> like it. They uh, always have such great presentations. You mean like this little soldier dude crawling? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but this definitely gives you a scale of reference. Doesn't it? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, he actually crawls. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> when he's got the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see here. Um, I can't see the labels on these, but I'm going to take a wild guess that this is probably an M107. And then this one doesn't have a label, but the one in right in front of you. I bear it. Yeah. Um, M92A1. Oh, it's an M82A1? M82A1. Yep. Yeah, too. Yeah, they kind of look the same. Oh, they, they really are. Oh, look, look at this big ass muzzle break on the end. <laughs> Have you ever seen the shockwave from one of these things fires in the desert? It's ridiculous. Mm. Like it kicks up so much sand. And there you've got a, a Dragonov SVD. Mm. Fun fact: this is probably the world's first truly purpose-built sniper rifle. Mm -hmm. And um, like everything else the Russians have, they base it off the AK. <laughs> If you can tell, you see it's got the same um, kind of wood furniture. The gas break is the same. The barrel's basically just stretched out. Mm -hmm. They changed the receivers, so instead of taking a 7.62 by 39 like an AK-47 does, this takes a 7.62 by 54, I believe. And it's a semi-automatic. And they got a newer one out. I think it's like 8 millimeter or something, but it's integrally suppressed. And it's called the Ventores, or thread cutter. And I think what is this here? That's just the do not touch side. What kind of scope is that? Mm -hmm. um, this one over. Yeah, that's thing. probably a thermal scope. Probably. Yeah. It's kinda hard to make those things slim. I mean uh if you want to put it in perspective, uh, the Navy SEALs who rescued Captain Phillips off the Mersk, Alabama, they probably had scopes like that on their 50 caliber rifles. And those rifles on their own weighed like 30 pounds with the ammo and everything. But they're so powerful, they could see like 500 yards from their ship into his life raft. They could tell what ones had the ones with the guns and which one was the captain. Hmm. And then in the dead of night, on two boats going up and down like this, they got three simultaneous headshots. No, I think this is an M82A3 or something. It, it looks like it might be. It's hard uh, to tell. Serbu Firestorm BFG oh. 58. BFG. <laughs> oh, Unreal Tournament. You, oh, come on, you're, you've played Unreal Tournament, haven't you? Yeah. Well, that's a, look at that scope. These are all great. Is that a Mauser C96? No, it's a 22. Oh, it is? It looks like a Mauser. Yeah, it looks like a uh, Yeah, I can't see those labels. But, oh, yeah. I, a couple of Chinese. Oh, the Type 17s? I never know, or type 17 to type 19 you can't remember. I had a friend back in the 90s used to put those, that was his father. What, called them the Chinese knockoffs? No. Scrounging up parts and rebuilding for little mountains. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. He did that and he made knives. <laughs> well, that's definitely a way to make some money. He gave me a knife, but I couldn't ever give him any amounts. <laughs> Sad. He wanted money, right? <laughs> Was he was he was he trying to gouge you on the price though? No, no. Okay. Just, 
how much more he was a friend so he gave me the knife as a birthday present and I wasn't going to ask him for a pistol or buy one from him. I, I told him I, I, I just never, thought maybe he'd be a good guy and give me one just, if I made guns I would I would do that I wouldn't see I'm nice though well look we got a couple of bull pups here you only give guns to my daughter <laughs> Let's see. I think one of these is probably a, um, an SAR. I know one of these has got to be a, a Tavor. They don't seem to be labeled. No. Oh, except for the white one on top. What's the white one? Steyr. Uh, Steyr Aug? Yep. Austrian. Actually, that gun is a. Uh, I believe it's probably one of the first bull pups. If it's not, it'd be the infield L80, uh, L81 or so, or the SA80. It's also known as. But uh, the Steyr Aug is actually a really great bull pup design. It's all modular, so you can swap out the barrels and everything. And it's actually been adopted by the Australian Army as as their primary infantry rifle. Hmm. So that's what the Australians use. If you say so. <laughs> Oh, these M4, M16s and the M4s and, and there's and a great and there's your favorite the pink one. I remember one year the security guy who was standing guard here. Uh, he was he, he got to hold that while he stood guard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he got it. That was funny. And there's the, the replica, like the one I. Oh, my replica is one of that. Yeah, <laughs> the M16. I can't remember who called it this, but I remember someone called them basically modern day ARs, called them Barbie guns because you can accessorize them any way you want. <laughs> Everybody wants to hang their cappuccino and slushy maker off these things. I'm a big 1911 fan, so I gotta look at these. I mean, think about it. Obviously, the gun was made in 1911. That was 106 or 7 years ago now? 106 years ago? Mm -hmm. About that. So it's a design that's over 100 years old, and it's still being mass-produced and used in combat and in law enforcement today, as well as civilian protection. That says something about its quality. My son is doing one thing that I think is reasonable. He is now paying his tuition instead of financing. Uh, the problem is he's going sporadic. Mm -hmm. He's not even enrolled this I think, is this, yeah, that's a, you know, well, I think they work better than your scar did. Mm -hmm. Probably. <laughs> yeah, and I think this right here, I can't see the label, but I'm just going to guess. I think that's an M14. M M1A Socom 16. Oh, it's an M1A one? Yep. Nice. Special Operations Command. There's a AK. He's better at it than I am, and I maintained a 4 0 when I was in the I think the, is the end of the barrel, is it slanted? Slanted? Yeah, like uh, like this. Not in a straight angle like this, but like this. Casino, looks straight. Oh, looks straight because uh, if you look, uh, some AKs will have what's called a, a slant break, where the barrel doesn't cut off like this; it cuts off like this. And oh, what it does, the bottom one has that. Yeah, yeah and what that does is um, you know, it helps redirect the recoil in your arm, so the gun's a little more controllable. Oh. <laughs> so look at that stuff. That's like a forty-round mag. Twenty-five dollars an hour. I remember seeing one that was like a 70, 75 round banana mag. Yeah. So basically, the whole thing just kind of curved up like this. <laughs> it was like it was like a smiley face on the bottom of an AK. Oh, well, these are beautiful. So it's kind of you know it's a it's a little alluring. The dog went a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, that's my, my daughter's an artist. Oh uh, yeah, my younger one is too, but I can't get her to uh, I can't get her to do anything for me. I, I, uh, is that an M79? To, to it kind of looks like it, but the barrel's real short. I think I'm. I'm not too sure. Type 100 paratrooper. Oh, type 100. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh yeah, I see it now. Yeah, yeah. Looks like it's in two pieces. Yeah, it does. Like, that threw me off there. But uh, if we see a Mauser, uh, let me know if you see a Mauser 98. Cool. 
because um, it's the Finnish version of that that uh, Simo Haya used to get his 540 kills in 100 days. I learned, apparently, that Mausers are like the easiest World War II gun to get your hands on aside from Moisen Nagants. Mm -hmm. So when you're going to gunsmith school, everybody's either working on a Mauser or a Moisen. <laughs> How far we've come along in, in technology for firearms. It's just amazing. And swing! Wait, wait, was a thing from Futurama? Trade places! <laughs> Um, is there anything interesting over here you see? These are some really long rifles though. I th these have got to be match lock or flint lock or, or at least muskets. Or, yeah. Are these are muskets? Yeah, looks like it. This is like what we were using in the what, Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was a tedious process to load your rifle too because Obviously, you've got to get the powder down the barrel, you've got to pack it all in, you've got to put your little paper on it and everything. And you got to do that while everybody else is shooting at you. No problem. Two people, one to load and one to shoot. Oy. That's why they use tits. Because <laughs> if you had a um, barrier, yeah. they stay below the barrier and you have several um, rifles or oh, yeah. shotguns lined up. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that kid is packing away. Yeah, so he just hands you one and works on the next. Well, he'll, so, yeah, like I said, if you got like two or three of them. Yeah. And he sets them up as you pull them off. <laughs> nice. Set them up, I'll knock them down, sonny boy. And you'll get your two cents a day. That's yeah. probably what the thing came from. <laughs> Strangely enough, it's probably quite accurate. Probably is. These are nice. <laughs> <laughs> is this a Ruger or a Luger? Or is this a Ruger? Oh, is this a Ruger? Yeah. yeah. I own one. Oh, yeah? Not quite this design, but something similar. Okay. Is this your, so you're, are you a bit of a Ruger nut then? No, this was what my father got. It was Ruger 22. Okay. And he uses it to shoot varmints. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, well, I was, so obviously I would say that the guy who, who owns the Ruger company was probably inspired by Luger. <laughs> He could be the same company. He just uh, changed it to. So. Uh, maybe. I mean, but no, because Luger's German. Luger's American. Unless the dude who's made Luger's came to America. Quite possible. I mean, he literally pulled that wall so like Caltech. Uh, really? The exception of the Up here. Oh, this Caltech? Yeah. All the CC two, 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 two um, chamber, and that ain't ammo chambers. Really? The switch that flicks it from. One to the other. So you've got two six round chain um and um, okay. And one in the that's barrel. Not, one in the chamber. So you've got thirteen rounds to do what you need to do. That's not bad. What, what do you think about things like the DP twelve, like these double barrel pump action shotguns? As long as they shoot one at a time. Uh, no, this one shoots both at the same time. That hurts. Have it's, you ever fired a twelve gauge shotgun? Yeah, I did. Um, but the one I used has uh, no buffer on the assembly in the stock. It's just it's those old ones, like the kind. Grandpa yeah, Mo uses in like the backwood country area. You, you gotta break the sucker open, put the one round in, and close it up. Well, the thing is, the, the force knocking you back. Oh yeah. Right? Now yeah. double that. Oh yeah. No, that's just, I can't imagine. That, 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 if it's fires both rounds at the same time. How about, about you, how about you, a ten gauge or an eight gauge? <laughs> plus um, um, this one. For the first time I. Uh, I ever fired a shotgun um, it was my uncle's, that old, that old one that you break open. I was so nervous about 12 gauge, it was, it was such an intimidating round to hold. So I opened the chamber up, and I put it in, I closed it, I put it to my shoulder and I'm all freaked out. And I pull the trigger, nothing happens, I forgot to cock the stupid thing. But that, that kind of diffused some of the fear though. <laughs> Drugs for more ammo. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's one shotgun. I don't quite think I see it here. One year they had an AA 12. 
Oh yeah. Full on back. Yeah. Recoilless. Oh yeah, I've seen people shoot those things one handed. Well, the downside. No trouble whatsoever. Yeah, but the thing is, is keeping your keeping it on target. It seems to be pretty accurate one handed. Like they can actually maintain a, a reasonable aim at the target. Well, the fact that it's recoilless is why they're holding it. They're able to hold it. Yeah, because it's, because every single part in that gun is like solid steel. I got that. And I think it's Israeli. No, it's American. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. That can't be an M73, can it? Is that right there? I mean, the stock is just making me think it is. No, it does have the design of a machine pistol. It does. It really does. I mean, I, I'm fairly certain that's not a grease gun. Yeah. 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 That one looks like a Mac 10. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, it's a presser. I bet it shoots like one too. <laughs> well, just within a few within a few seconds, you'll dump a clip. Yeah, dump a whole 30 round mag at nine millimeter. And, and the thing, the only problem is with something like that is staying on target. Oh yeah, it's gonna climb. Oh yeah, the the most most rise in those things is ridiculous. This is my dad's favorite of all time. Dad loves my dad loves the Tommy gun. I mean, I can't blame. It. It's classic. It's great. And durable. Oh yeah, yeah. If you shoot someone with 20 rounds of 45 ACP at 600 to 800 rounds a minute, there's no way they're getting off. Well. The first couple rounds, I'm not. You, you should be done. Oh, I hope so. But I've heard people say they preferred the um, the um, magazine to the to the, to the, to the drum. drum. Yeah, because the drum rattles too much and it tends to jam. Yeah, the jammy parts are worse. Oh, yeah. Well, rattling is pretty bad too if it gives away your position, man. You're still dead. Here's a, a here's a calico. These are really cool. Okay. Because they got a tubular mag up here. Mm-hmm. I, I, I remember seeing the specs on this, and it still kind of blows my mind because it's like a, it's like a spiral, like 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 the barrel, like the bolts are almost doing a barrel roll. It, it's really what it looks like. It's a it's a helical. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that like the most bizarre thing you've ever seen though? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I, I mean, I, they got the they got the bigger ones over there too. I I just don't see the point of it. I mean, 50, 50 bullets in that little part. I mean, that's a pretty good point. Yeah, but still, <laughs> fifty I mean, pretty good points. Fifty in that, in a more in a more ergonomic package, though. It's perfectly symmetrical. You, you don't have to have any kind of special mods if you're righty or a lefty. It, you know, bullets drop out the back. You got a clear bag on top, so you can see exactly how many rounds you got. It can punch through body armor in a hundred meters, and it's got a better bullet. You can almost fit that one in your pocket, though. So yeah, I'll also take the P90 because I can still fit it in here. <laughs> I would totally take a P90. Well, I would love an MP5, but I hear they're like super expensive. <laughs> $5,000 or some ridiculous number. Is that, is that one suppressed? Which one? The MP5 on top there. It looks like it. Is it integrally suppressed? <laughs> okay, well, hold on a minute. Um, uh, is, is the group right here like extra wide? Yes. Okay, yeah, then this is an MP5 SD. It's integrally suppressed. Because it's got to go over the whole gas tube and everything. Because this is, I mean, this is still a blowback operated 9mm. But apparently, you know, you've seen in movies and video games where you have to slap the, the MP5 to make it load. Apparently, Heckler and Cock encourage you to do that because it's better for the health of the gun. To make sure all the parts are clicked together. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It, it, it helps ensure that you get around in there if you give it a good slap. So, in a, in a world where shooting things is okay, it's important to slap your gun. I was watching some science fiction thing, Thunderbirds. Yeah. They were flying some old um, rocket of their father's. Yeah. And it's like, trying to start it up, nothing. It wouldn't crank up. Oh, and, and they're like, okay, just do it like Dad does. Hit it. <laughs> it worked. Bam! Bam. And it, <laughs> Everything comes up. Or like that scene, you've seen Armageddon, right? Uh, the, the asteroid where they got to blow it up with the yeah. With, yeah with, at the end where the Russian guy's hang, hitting on the controls with the, with the ratchet or whatever to make it work. So Finally, we can go home. <laughs> One of the Star Wars novels refers to when Chewbacca hits something as emergency repair procedure. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Oh look! Oh dude, check this out. You got to get a picture of this. A freaking um a duck foot. Isn't that cool? 
you get all four of those barrels work. It's just um, spread in a, like a like if you're in a room full of people. Bam. Looks like a twenty-three. Uh, some it depends. There's some I've seen three. I've seen some with like five or six. There it is. <laughs> There's this one cool knuckle duster. Um, uh, it's got like six shots, and the grip doubles as brass knuckles, and it has a little uh, concealable knife in it. <laughs> What do we got over here? Uh, body armor. Always good stuff. Uh, rocket launcher. Rocket launcher. How armor has evolved, huh? This almost looks like snakes get up, doesn't it? Like what? Like snakes get up a bit there from uh, Metal Gear Solid 4. <coughs> kind of reminds me. Not really. Kind of reminds me of. A little reminds you of some Metal Gear Solid game. Let's see what rocket launchers we got here. Maybe they're on the other side. Those are tear gas guns. Right there. Yeah. Hey, well, I'm blind, so. I understand. There's your rocket launcher. Oh, no, no, these are tear gas guns. You gotta aim these at the crowd, bro. This will pacify them so quick. <laughs> That's one word for it. Yeah, it's pacified. It might pacify some of them, but it might enrage the rest of them. We'll call it excessive pacification. Oh, words. Oh, how we love you, words. You do things and stuff for us. No minigun this year? Not this year. Yeah, you had a minigun? Yeah. You had a minigun, you had a Ma Deuce, you had a, a 1919, a Gatling gun, an MG42. <laughs> they cycle through stuff throughout uh, different years, that way they don't have the same thing every single time. So. Oh, look, there's no way I can get bored looking at an antique Gatling gun. <laughs> it's a beautiful, those little Gatling guns are works of art. And miniguns. <laughs> Masterpiece. What was that thing from uh, Iron Man 2? Torso Taker, the um, uh, Powder Maker. Our boys in uniform call it Uncle Gaspacho or Puff the Magic Dragon. <laughs> and the little crawly soldier again. I like the little crawly soldier. He's got a lot of heart. Yeah, so there's stuff in here, but not as much as there was last year. I'm actually a little, a little let down, actually, because they had more stuff, way more stuff. <laughs> but this is only half the armory. Okay. Well, you got to see the other half. Well, on the other hand, the women are... Look at these rocket launchers right next to these tear gas gra grenades. Uh, there are things, you know, like most men have slightly armor. Women have a much lesser armor. Also... Let's see if we can find some medieval weapons. Good job. 